I honestly think Traders Next Year, right now it's the number one reality show ever streamed. I knew while we were making it that it was really special because who can put a heavyweight champion of the world with a Dancing with the Stars legend? You know, it was so many different people and like Marcus and Larsa, like no one, everyone was like, what? You're yeah. not allowed to have a couple. You Why know? not? So, right? Yeah. Exactly. What's up, you guys? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm Justin Martindale, and have we got a delicious, traitorous episode for you. <laughs> there will be banishment. There might even be murder with this week's guest, one of my favorites. You know her from the new series, or the season two of Traitors. Uh, she's also on the Jeff Lewis Live radio show with me on Sirius XM. Please, and Shaws of Sunset. There's so many. She is a and Renaissance woman. <laughs> And I'm very proud of being at the agency as a real estate agent. Yes. And I'm very proud of Till the Dirt, our little podcast with me and my husband. Yes, yes. It's the one, the only <laughs> Mercedes, MJ Javid is so excited. Was that you doing Alan Cummings, by the way? I tried. <laughs> and I, can I just say, let's just get into it right now. He has the best job on television right now. He does. I mean, I I love RuPaul's Drag Race. Congrats on a new season. Like like the new season. Are you watching it? Are you RuPaul's Drag Race? I don't think it's aired yet. Oh, it has. Oh, the new one, the brand new one. <laughs> the brand new oh, one. Okay, yeah, okay. they're they're they've kicked off two queens already. Well, I haven't even watched Traders yet, so I'm at really, all. You haven't even watched the season. Uh, it's every single episode has been on in the room. But I have a personality where if I miss anything, I have to just be like, okay, Tommy, you just finish it. I have to watch it from the beginning because I want to see the looks on the faces and, you know, the editing, everything, the all of it. Now, right. I think what I was saying about RuPaul's Drag Race, RuPaul's been killing it every year, getting like outstanding reality show host, best reality show. And I honestly think Traders next year, right now it's the number one reality show Ever streamed. Ever streamed on Peacock. Right. That's. I knew while we were making it that it was really special because who can put a heavyweight champion of the world with a Dancing with the Stars legend? You know, it was so many different people and like Marcus and Larsa, like no one, everyone was like, what? You're yeah. not allowed to have a couple. You Why know? not? So, right? Yeah. Exactly. So did you cool. watch the first season? Well, I did when I got the email. Oh, oh, to, oh an when email? I was, when I got the email. Uh-huh. And then yesterday I was trying to be like social media posting and I was out doing open houses and I was like, oh, what can I find? And so the year ago today popped up on my phone and it was the Traders season one that the NBC Universal were like, hey, hey, can you support your friends and share this on your socials? And so I was like, wow, that was exactly a year ago. So was that because Reza was on it from Shaw's? Reza and yeah. Kate. Mm hmm. Chastain. So like, yep. Ugh. She's the smartest girl ever. I am obsessed with her. Yes. I remember she DM'd me like, randomly and I don't even remember for what it was and and she was just like I just love you I'm obsessed with you and I'm like I'm sorry I'm watching Traders right now and this just blew my mind I know the other night that happened she texted me out of nowhere and I was like I took a picture of the screen I was like you're on my screen she's so smart oh. I can maybe you guys should have a kiki I would love that well yeah. I think it was I think it was right around the time that she had got pregnant and mm -hmm. I, I was like, please come do my podcast. She's like, I'd love to, but like, uh. I'm right. like, yeah, no. Yeah. So now she's like back. Totally. She's actually, I, I'm going to say there might be some spoilers in this episode. Okay. But um, there are four episodes in. And if you're not caught up, that's on you. So right. I mean, I don't know anybody who is not caught up. People are like, give me the next episode. Tell me what's going to happen. Or don't. I don't want to know. You know, it's like. Everyone's it, into it. It's just the best show. And I have people now being like, you got to watch the Australia version. You've got to watch the UK version. And I'm like, okay, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know those. Well, you'd have to be really thirsty, if I'm being honest, to watch <laughs> them because it's, it's a little snoozy compared to like starting with like, you know, because I mean, I did. I tried. Mm -hmm. And you're like, mm, I don't know these people. But season one? Of Traders US. Season one was so special because it was a mix. Yes. It was half normies. Mm -hmm. And those are, you know, normal. 
Private civilians. Private civilians, hard at work, nine to five, take care of the kids, mm -hmm. you know, middle America, like going in, we want to compete. We've always wanted to be on like a survivor or something, but we mm -hmm. just haven't gotten there yet. True. And then the rest of them was like, you know, the Bravo Lebs. The I mean, I think it was like Brandy Glanville was on it. There Kate, was the Reza. Olympic athlete, the the swimmer. Um, come on, not what? Michael Phelps. Yeah, no, no. someone. It was um, oh, uh, Lochte, the, Ryan, yes, Ryan Lochte. Yes, yes, that was him. Um, yeah, so it was such a new show, and it was like these, you know, celebrities versus the the normies, and and Alan. And Alan, who is just Broadway legend, just just everything. He's so <laughs> amazing. But I I don't I think personally they changed the format because of the last episode because that was so hard to watch. Tell me. It was the woman, I can't remember her name, from Survivor who won Sandra. Twice. No, no, no. That's your season. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, um, Sari. Yes, yes. So okay. I'm not a big Survivor fan, but I was like, oh, she's like cutthroat. She kind of reminds me of Sandra a little bit in your season. Mm -hmm. And then the woman from like Long Beach, she was like married. Uh, she, her wife was, was expecting. expecting. Yes. Um, Andy. Mm -hmm. God, you're really good. <laughs> yes. She's so pretty. I just couldn't take my eyes off her. Oh, and then at the final, whatever the ceremony was, she's mm -hmm. like, I trust you. You're a faithful. I trust you too. Let's go. Mm -hmm. and She's like, I'm a traitor. And yeah. the look on Andy's face was just wrecked. Devastation. Like, I hope she's okay. Yes. Like. Well, they do have counselors on the show. They have, like, grief people 24-7 checking on you at all times to make sure, even now. Even, even now? Yes. They should have those outside of the castle as well <laughs> for some of these people. <laughs> Yeah, like, by the way, you need this therapy. <laughs> yeah, just take it. It's consolation. Just do it. Now, okay, so you talked about the email. So you got, how did how did you get on this show? I can't believe this. I was just, <laughs> I just checked my email. And someone from NBC. Someone decided to toss my name in the ring. Is that hat in the ring? Your name into the hat? Your name into the ring. There are smarter people that are watching us struggle right now yeah. on the other side of And these they're going to like leave comments <laughs> like, it's this, cancel them. Yeah. Throw my hat in the ring. Throw your hat that in the ring, yes. Way. No, some, yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't that far of a stretch because they already had Reza. So for round two, for them to go to me or, you know, the Bravo people, I got the email. I I think I just like might've slept on it for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay. And that was it? No. You have to go undergo rigorous screening. Rigorous. How rigorous? Uh, <laughs> rigorous, rigorous. Sit, like, yes, multiple 600 question. I hope this isn't confidential. But no. Hopefully it's not. No. I mean, um, 600 question psych evals, um, physical psych evals. Like you have to go to many doctor's visits. You have oh. to give them a lot of- Allergies. Sure. Blood, <laughs> urine. I'm not kidding. EKG. Um, like, I'm sure they're testing your system for, like, drugs. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm here, so I guess Well, I they passed. want you to, they want to make sure you're up to compete. I mean, yes. I'm sure John had to go through way more than you guys did. Parliament John. <laughs> Parliament John. <laughs> <laughs> and I love, I mean, this season, it's just so <laughs> dynamic and insane, and it's I have some questions from actual viewers because I was like, MJ's gonna be here. Let's get let's get to the nitty gritty. I actually wore my Traders Green say, shirt for you today. You look so good. It is such a gorgeous color. Thank it's so you. Rich. Yeah, thank you. Yes, um, money, honey. What was this your first time going to Scotland? First time going to Scotland. Didn't know that motherfucking the UK includes. <laughs> Why'd you Scotland? put UK in quotes? <laughs> Because I was like, allegedly the UK. <laughs> yeah, because I kept on saying that. Um, can I for the travel part? I was like, um, can I do the UK portion from? Because they would fly you from LAX to Amsterdam, uh -huh. and then from Amsterdam to I guess to Inverness, uh -huh. and where the castle is. Wait, Inverness is where the castle is. Yes. Uh, Am I allowed to say that? Yes, you are, because my favorite show right now is Outlander, which takes place in Inverness, and it's in the Scottish, like, 
realm. So I knew there was like some sort of correlation yeah. of the two. Yeah. So at some point, someone had to tell me the UK is Scotland is the UK. And I thought, no, it's just England and Wales. Stop lying. You're a traitor. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so I was like, so educated. See what happens when you travel. Yeah. You, you just learn you're things. Like, what? What is this place? Now, so you get there. Um, I'm trying to. F- you get there. Yeah, you get I, there. And where do you, do you just go like to the castle? So when you, um, when you deplane, mm-hmm. there is already somebody there, part of the crew, who is basically, it kind of felt like the movie Reservoir Dogs when like, you know, how they had like a very systemized way of like Mr. Clean and, you know, isn't that, that was it, right? Like, we're, okay, here we go. Reservoir Dogs with um, uh, la, Harvey la, la. Keitel. And yes, yes, yes. Okay, so here's here's what it was. You got off the plane. Somebody was there to greet you and basically like, you're never going to be alone again, unsupervised until it's time to go home and see your family. So we were, hi, Mercedes, oh my God, the warmest welcome. I got very lucky with my producer. They call your um, your producer um, welfare. That is the jargon. Oh. So- you're not a PA, you're called welfare. Okay. Got it. So my guy, by the way, the scene, the the set full of hot, gorgeous, friendly, civilized, polite, like so much fun. Okay. Um, the whole time. Like they are so nice in the UK. They are so cheerful and professional. So like I just felt I just felt that and taken care of. Appreciated that yeah. all the time. Um, so anyway, from that moment you are going to be supervised in a way. There is a lot of discouraging um, chatter between you. You cannot talk game when the cameras aren't rolling. You can't talk game if there's like, if Alan says like, time's up for a conversation to have to end at the round table. That's real time. That's real. Oh, wow. And if Parliament John is long-winded and wanted to talk for a long time, they would not add time. That was our time. So- Part of like Kevin getting frustrated with Kate, it's kind of funny because he was like, she was looking at me and I enjoyed it, of course. I Mm -hmm. thought it was the funniest thing ever, just the looks on her face. But it was because there's time for everything. So when we got off the plane, I was like, oh, you're taking our phones right now. You're, you know, going to take everything. They take all of the communication. They take your chargers, your watch, your passport, Ugh. your wallet, your money, everything. How did that feel for you? Like prison. Like you were like <laughs> checking in. <laughs> to I was serve like, a take, a, take a girl from LA and just be like, we need your phone and your charger. Mm-hmm. What else? Your wallet. I'm sure. I mean, you don't need it, right? Absolutely everything. Ugh. Absolutely everything. But it's also like searched with like a team of security, like professional people are coming in you know how like the doctor in the doctor's appointment is no longer alone in the room with you? Like there's always like a nurse. So it was very professional, but it was like, okay, this is happening. This is happening. Like I'm the cool, I feel like I am one of the calmest people ever to walk this earth. Okay. Uh That's just my thing. I feel like my superpower. But if you were anybody else in that moment, you'd probably be fucking losing it because it's, it's legit. Do they do like a body search? No. They're not like, all right, Larsa, let's. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of Larsa. <laughs> She's so hot. Yeah, yeah. Naked in the shower, everything. I mean, I just wanted to know, like, yeah, you get like these housewives and it's just like, wait, no, what? You're going to do what? Like, so they don't do like a, like a, no. you know, bend over, get Jeez. the flashlight, nothing like that. How to take it there. No, actually, maybe now they will if they hear this next year, they'll be like, but they don't check for like burner phones and all that stuff. Oh, no, no, they do. They yeah, do. Yeah. Did you are we gonna put the burner phone on our house? Is that what you're suggesting? No. I'm just thinking of season <gasps> three. If I get an email one day. Uh-huh. I'm no, no. I would be kicked off like immediately, I think. So, okay. So they also will take the remote control of your, you know, like your room. Like so because some of them are smart remotes and stuff. So like they really are thorough. They want you to feel like you are in a castle. They don't want to compromise the integrity of the game. Yeah. And you will eventually respect that. Unless you're shysty, you will not want to compromise the integrity of the game. 
There are, it's hard though, because there's downtime when they're setting up these incredibly elaborate shots and you do hang out and you're sitting together and we can't talk about anything, but we're still sitting and waiting. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about anything, but we're sitting and waiting. Mm. So it can weigh on you. And you do have to have a certain strong will power inside of you to be able to sustain and um, last. Uh, it's like it's a lot. Like just because it's one of those shows where honestly, I feel like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Thank it's you. Totally that. There's there is strategy to it, but it's like along with just the murders themselves, there's also the banishment. And when you're mm -hmm. in that circle and you're just like, oh, uh -huh. like I, I one of my friends is peppermint. And I remember we were at oh, this party her. talking is about she? peppermint. Oh my god, yes. And I love peppermint. I did the the telethon, the Dragons and Dangerous telethon with her last year. And I remember seeing her over Christmas and I was like, oh my God, how's Traders? Like, is it fun? She She's was like, so well, pissed. <laughs> I was there for a bit. Let's just say it's kind of short. And I'm like, no. And then watching it, I was just kind of like, this sucks. It did. It Hashtag does. justice for peppermint. Totally. I think it actually might have been trending. Like people were just, people were pissed. Yes. Because it's like in the challenge, it was like, who's the most popular person here? Right. And then Peppermint gets was, kicked off first. Right. So it was between Peppermint and Deontay, between the who is the most yes, popular. Yeah. With those so scarecrows. Beautiful personalities, so full of light. I didn't get traitor energy from her. I was, you know, me and Max were the only ones that stuck up for her mm -hmm. and were. I think when you watch, when I watched it back, I remembered it as standing up for her much more and defending her. But at the same point in time, to your point of damned if you do, damned if you don't, when you see that there is this, um, I guess, herd mentality is mm -hmm. what Peppermint was talking about. And then I started to repeat it as well in the house in in that how quickly that fire started. Yeah. And I was there. I did my work to tell people, like, her reaction wasn't defensive. At all. It wasn't defensive. At all. And no. Trishel was, like, so adamant about, like, she gave me this weird look. And I was like, I'm like, Trishel, stop. And, and I love that Charista, Charista uh, stood up for her as well and was just kind of like, I didn't get that look at all. Right. But Trishel went out of her way to be like, it's peppermint, it's peppermint, it's peppermint, it's peppermint. And I'm like. Right. And... Sheree Whitfield, we love her. She is the downest girl ever. Um, then Sheree, excuse me, then Peppermint is trying to defend herself. And Larsa heard her say, you just said traitor. Oh, when she fumbled over her words in the bar. Right. Yeah. And I was in the kitchen when that happened. And I was like, yeah, but you're saying traitor, faithful, traitor, fa like all day long. That is not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not enough to say, ah, I nailed you. This episode is brought to you in part by Rocket Money. Guys, I know everything now is in an app. And I want to ask you guys something personally. How many subscriptions do you actually have? Go on. Think about it. You'd be surprised. And Rocket Money is the perfect app that takes control of how much you are actually spending on every subscription. I got Rocket Money and I found out that I actually was subscribed maybe two, sometimes three times to the same subscription. And what they will do is they will filter out all those unnecessary subscriptions, um, consolidate all your spending and actually keep you on track of your own financial spending for your subscriptions. Also, what I love about Rocket Money is that it will send you notifications about how much you are spending per week, per month, and so on. Another thing that I love about this app is that you can negotiate how much you actually want to be paying your bill, and they will negotiate with the services to get you a lower rate per month. So that's always good. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting your money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Saiyan, S-A-Y-I-N. That's rocketmoney.com slash Saiyan. rocketmoney.com slash Saiyan.
there was something you were talking about with damned if you do, damned if you don't. Okay. Right now, people are up in arms that I called Dan Mm -hmm. out Mm -hmm. and I suspected him as a traitor and I was first to do that and all that. And then they're like, why did you stop being on Dan? Mm -hmm. And if you watch all of these episodes that have already aired, you could see that if you, once I say what I said, I've kind of done my work because then it's on everyone else to put that together. When you heard him in the turret talking about um, who not to kill, it's basically like the people that he sensed after after I after I voted for Dan the first time, the attention started to swirl around to other people. By the time that Janelle kept going for shield after shield after shield, yeah, she became such a selfish traitor mm-hmm. that I was like, what? Like every day somebody has to go. She just wants to stay alive the whole run of the the show. It was being a selfish traitor is mm-hmm. not the best thing. Yeah. And that's why I think I got the 19 roses that everyone was like. Oh, we're going to get into that in a minute. (laughs) (laughs) So many roses. Yeah. So every day when you have a banishment, you have to vote for someone. I'm not going to go to Dan, 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 because how am I going to stay in the castle if I keep gunning for someone who I think has the power to have me murdered? Yeah. So people are pissed. They're like, you had the eye on Dan. Why'd you go astray? It's like. That's because I didn't want to die. Yeah, I yeah. don't want to get focused on. And if he is a traitor, he'll be like, "There's 17 MJ's other people coming for me." Right, and there's 17 other people who can step up now. So that's my little, that's my thing about that because that to me is, um, thinking two steps ahead, maybe mm-hmm. five steps ahead, not just you know about today. So. And you mentioned little. How? When did you know you have the littlest handwriting? <laughs> just the t- the tiniest, delicate, the smallest font. Just it's not even. I like, love that you every time that. you pull up that chalkboard, I'm like, <laughs> what? Like the smallest. Like Dan is three letters. It's the smallest Dan. <laughs> just t- everyone else has like messages and calligraphy. You're just like. <laughs> Drawing daisies. I have a reason. I have a reason. So you would see people drawing Mm -hmm. and you could understand, like if you wanted to watch, it would be obvious. If you're writing out Phaedra, then you're going to be writing for a lot longer than Dan. Yeah. So I wanted my vote to, I guess, stay really- Oh, a strategy? Yeah. Your font was your strategy. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Because it's literally like, meep, meep. (laughs) I'm like, oh, she says. Some people are like, I am sorry. Let's get coffee (laughs) when we get back. That's exactly true. Oh, uh, okay. Well, let's get into some questions. And some of these questions, I feel like you've already kind of touched around, but um, okay. uh, Danielle Rohr uh, asked, this is all from the Just Say In world. These are actual listeners. They want to know. Shout out, Danielle. Uh, where do you guys stay? Are you actually in the castle? Or yes. is it like hotels outside? We're in the castle. So you were all like on different floors in different rooms. It's a big hassle. So even though we only film in mostly the first floor, mm-hmm. where it, there's um, stairways and offshoots, and it's actually to the last day that you're there, you're always going to be lost. It's a maze. There's so many different um, ways to get to different parts of the castle that you cannot get to. Is it haunted? I didn't feel any spirits Uh. personally, but I think I was worried about the trauma of like, no glam, who's going to kill me? (laughs) That was the ghost. (laughs) There were so many. That was the horror. You're like, no. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Oh God. Just a castle with no glam. Uh. Um, How does the breakfast arrivals work? Like, because I feel like you guys have to, you wake up, you got to get the makeup and the glam going. Mm -hmm. How long... So they spread you guys out because it's always like two come in at first and then three Mm -hmm. and then the rest. Like Okay, so you can set your alarm for as early as you want to wake up and start getting yourself ready as early as you want, right? Mm -hmm. So I would always give myself two hours because I wanted to shower. I wanted to try to like, you would like, there is just, you know how you might even take 30 minutes before you even get out of bed? Yeah. Like I would try to do that. do I? Right? (laughs) Not this week with the pups, but anyway. Um, So once you're ready, they'll call you and tell you, like, we're going to call you down to breakfast. But you know you might be calling to do your exit interview. Oh. Yes. So the exit, the the 
Those are all the same day? Yes. So everyone does sleep time. through the night? Everyone who could have gotten murdered is not going to be told until that next morning. Oh, so when they it's get the wild. envelope and they're sitting there, they're like, ah, I've been murdered. And so that's it's the after, morning. It's after they've gotten up, we've gotten ready, we've then waited because just because you're ready doesn't mean they're ready for you, right? right? So breakfast gets set up and they intentionally call us down to capture the reaction. And, you know, what I thought was really cool watching Dan and, um, sorry, Dan, Phaedra and Parvati. A Parvati, yeah. The three of them had been alone at breakfast that one day. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, I never even thought that they would have that alone time together. So they, the producers have their strategy of like letting them have a second because they have no other time. Like we don't really have that much time to communicate with each mm -hmm. other. Unless we can. And, Poison and each other with alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is that. Yeah. <laughs> that so, is so fascinating. It's really nerve wracking because Diane, Diane, hi. Um, <laughs> because you get ready, you're waiting. You know you're going to be called down, but you're not sure if it's going to be to breakfast. And if you did get murdered, you have to like sit down in the, the confessional room. What's the other option? Oh, they might also just have you do what they call a MIV, the confessional that you're not getting murdered, but they're going to have you talk about a What's challenge or challenge something. And stuff like that. So there are really three crazy possibilities. And it's all of those breakfast morning reactions are 100% real. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, yep. Or like if you're a trader, that's like, oh, you have to act. Because I feel like the traders are the only ones who are okay. But you know, you're watching everyone. So most of the time, I would be like, I don't give a fuck who walks in the room. I want to <laughs> see the reactions of the people when they see who comes and doesn't come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like to see if they're like, yeah, fake yeah. or not. And by the way, the next episode that airs, remember how Peter, the bachelor, Pete uh -huh. the pilot, he decided to withhold, their group decided to withhold the who trophy. got the shield? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or the shield, yeah. That is so brilliant because it really makes for good TV. And I I'm really, sure. yeah, I give it up to him because he, um, really creates um, a very interesting plot twist and turn of events for what's going to air. Well, and I caught that too because I watched it over the weekend and they're like, next week on The Traders, and they showed him and I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if they meant to do that, but I'm just like, oh, shit. No, is my husband did the exact same thing. He did? I was Tommy, like, oh, he's there at the table. And I'm like, Ugh! That's like, so funny. Well, I mean, we'll have to see. Anyone who watches the last episode all the way to the end may deduce mm -hmm. the same thing. That it, like, yeah. hmm, who's there? It's so good. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Here's a question. If they don't stay at the castle... Do they all come together in cars and wait to be told where to go to breakfast? I think you just answered that question. It's yeah, the, we, yes. Yeah, so yeah. when we travel to do the challenges, we're in separate cars, like groups of four. They'll like right. tell you to volunteer and like break off into breaks and groups and whatever. Yeah. I do have a question. Uh, so you've already answered. You all stay in the castle. You mm -hmm. all have your own rooms. Mm -hmm. Does each room have a shower? Every room has a shower, oh, bathroom. Thank God. Yes. Yes. It's, oh, I just kept picturing some <laughs> weird dorm with like one shower at the end of the hallway with no. a haunted candelabra like, like a, floating. Like a hostel yeah. in Europe? No. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think people of the caliber that they had on this show would, you know, tolerate that kind of I would think, accommodation. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you're going to have Phaedra? Like, just, <laughs> what? Bathe with common people? No. My she, God. Um, oh, my God. She looked so good every second. I mean, she she's so already good. like, She's gone viral, and 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 it's in a, a question that's coming up. Okay. Um, was there anything funny or interesting that happened off screen? Um, I mean, Kate and I had fun once she came. We did sort of get like um, giddy, like cabin feverish. That was really fun, just like laughing. We all kind of started smoking cigarettes for the month or for the weeks that I we I mean, were it there. is like prison. You don't have your phones. You're all bartering for cigarettes. and <laughs> Yeah, we all, yeah. So there was a whole group of us that were smokers. Um, so that that was kind of fun. Uh -huh. um, who, I mean, you know what it is? Like, you know, like when people talk about being like on set of a movie mm -hmm. and you just watch people in their element 
I had moments where I would like see Deontay and I would like be like, that's a heavyweight boxer. Like, and he would be like so athletically insane. Like he would like punch the air when he was like warming up for that scarecrow competition. Yeah. And, you know, you just have the, your moments where you're in awe. And he just left. He did because of peppermint and because of Max. Like just uh, the biggest heart. Mm-hmm. And like you were talking about the like, you know, the 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 mental health people, the counselors, you mm-hmm. really saw him struggling. I mean, he was crying. I know. And you're just like, you just see this big like teddy bear of a guy. And he just is like, I can't do this. Yes. And that was, that was and no one shitty. talked about it. No one addressed it or anything. It was really, really shitty because mm-hmm. I felt the same way when Peppermint was gone when Max was gone, um, Johnny Bananas. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want to see anybody go because even the, even though you guys don't see everything, you have to understand that we filmed very long days. Yeah. So even by the end of the first challenge, it felt like we had already bonded so much. So for someone to come all the way there. To Scotland, yeah. And yes, and all the prep that I told you, you have to go through, and then just be well, and especially and and it's kind of kind of like Drag Race in a sense, where it's like Peppermint goes on Drag Race, and it's like I have all these looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to give you fashion. I'm going to give you all of it, and then it's like you're the first one to go home. You're like, are you kidding me? I packed totally. all this shit, and now I have to go back home. And yeah. you said before we filmed that they had a mood board. Oh yes, okay. Yeah. So we were told. So this is like a how to pack for this trip. Mm -hmm. You get a mood board. They tell you the number of outfits that you need if you make it to the end. So you know exactly what to pack. If there is something that is athletic, they will wash it and give it back to you. And there was a lot of like, you know, hoodies and whatever, boots and stuff like that. So um, we we were told to be in a lot of like, castle jewel tones like browns and golds and mm-hmm. mustards and emeralds and jewel tones so tartan like <clears throat> like exactly. ephedrus and a lot of like scottish like kilt yes. gowns and stuff yeah mm-hmm. like navy and yeah harry potter Emerald. stuff yeah. yes. harry potter <laughs> hufflepuff <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> so that was it and i was like oh i don't know if i have that do i have that do i even look good in that color it turns out um wardrobe would like tell you they would tell you like this is what you're going to wear. They would slip a note under under your um, door. and Terrifying. And Yeah, and they would be like, this is what you're going to wear tomorrow. That's so bizarre. So it's like Scottish Big Brother, almost. It's just like, here's what, like everyone's watching and you're part of the show. I mean, it's yeah. brilliant. Um, how did you feel in that coffin? I was thinking about Going home, I was like, I wonder what time my flight is going to be. I was thinking about, like, what am I going to eat? What When am I going to... Like, it was a wrap for me. I was convinced yeah, that, that you were I poisoned. was on my way home. Yes. And, like, I was kind of like a combination of, like, how do I look laying here? <laughs> <laughs> is my... Is it giving like, glamour? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what's happening with my neck? <laughs> um, what? So it was, like, a lot of, like... Are, is anything going to crawl onto me? Because we were in there for a while. Ugh. I think they closed it too, but I guess not for that long. I Just to test so us. So yeah, you know. had all of the roses, all of the black roses. All of them. Um, and you're just laying there. Now, we're in your head, or are you going like, who could have poisoned me? Okay, I was a little slow to that game. So <laughs> Larsa, while we were marching the funeral procession, uh-huh. she was like, girl, I think it's going to be you. And so me, Parvati, and um, and Ekin, we were walking. And by the way, that was a really painful long walk on gravel and really narrow shoes that were so uncomfortable. Okay. So Parvati's pretending that she's afraid it's going to be her. Yeah. Ekin Sue was paranoid from the night before that she kept on saying, guys, if I'm not here in the morning. Right, right, right. You know, so... She was like, she's like, just kill me already. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So what I was doing was disassociating. I was like, okay, you're going to 
what are your, what is everyone going to say when you come home? Everyone's going to be like, oh, you know, you made it or you didn't make it. You got eliminated. We knew you suck. Like you're just thinking about your real life. And Ekin was like, why are you so calm? Are you a traitor? Oh. And I was like, I just, I'm, I cannot control the outcome. So therefore I'm going to disassociate and I'm going to make it. Yeah. And my feet hurt. Yeah. So. But I mean, Phaedra has the she, most iconic line of the season. So right. Oh Lord Jesus. Not Ek and Sue. <laughs> not Ek and Sue. She no, herself. not Ek and Sue. <laughs> to the point where I've been saying it just like around my apartment, just being like, oh, not Ek and Sue. The dog will like knock its food over. Not Ek and Sue. Like it's Amazing. just, there's like people making mugs and merch and like, it's all over the place. Um, she was she was rattled. She I'm was sure pissed. she was. And it, the question here was, um, was I can sue in the coffin when they covered it with dirt? Because they straight up just made it look like they buried her alive. I know. <laughs> and they shut it. And then I'm assuming they let her get out. I, I think is they, she still in I Scotland? Think she had to, yeah, I think she's buried <laughs> in Scotland. Not I can sue. Yeah, you have to sign a release, and oh, you and know what? If you get murdered, you get murdered. God, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's what I was wondering. It was like if they put her in there and she's just there for a minute, and then they just you just hear the dirt oh just falling God. on. And Tamara even said she's like, "Do not bury me." So I wanted yeah. to see Tamara and, buried. Yeah, yeah, I know. But she was she was a little like she took it hard. There's something else. That happens. It's way oh, worse. Oh, way worse than being buried. So that's just way a, worse. just a little a stay tuned. Way worse. Way worse. By a zillion trillion. I'd rather stay in that coffin for a month than the things that are for coming a are coming for us in the future. Like that was nothing. Like Ooh. I would put my kid in that coffin <laughs> easily. Oh that's a terrible thing to say because you know what I mean? That I'll way. throw flowers on my kid in that coffin any day. It was, but like, it was there's nothing. more that's hap that's going to happen in future episodes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah, it's fine. I, I, I mean, that's why we're all glued. That's why we're talking about it right now. Uh, Katie Savage wants to know about Alan Cumming. What's it like being around him? Is he? Is it like seeing a unicorn in real life? And what does he smell like? It is like being. It is like being around a unicorn. He smells incredible. Mm -hmm. He's just, it's like the perfect amount of intimidating, but um, among us and, you know, jokes with us. And he was playing his DJ list for us <gasps> because he does curate his own music. Yeah, he's got a club in New York. Yes, he's mm -hmm. got Club Cummings, but club he also Cummings. he also tours as a DJ. He's about to open like a, a theater night at Studio 54 in New York. Mm -hmm. It's like his it's like his one man show at Studio 54. I'm like, it's like so down to earth yeah. and so sassy and so cute. I mean, everything. He's the right amazing. amount of villain, just mm -hmm. treachery, just camp uh -huh. Uh -huh. it's everything you'll He's just amazing. like and he'll just show up on screen have like peacock feathers and like a cape and we're all just like yeah exactly. like okay like there's no questioning like exactly it's Never. so uh what does he smell like like just really is it sexy like sweet or like i found it to be like um fresh and like not fruity. Yeah. Uh, obviously Whoa. it wasn't like that's more of like a female. No, yeah. like I wore Jasmine, this um really unsuspecting brand that is it's called, it doesn't matter what mine is called, but um mine is like fruity. Mm -hmm. Jasmine. No, that's floral. That's what I meant. Floral, yeah. So he's Jasmine's a flower. Yeah. So yeah. so um he's uh more like that clean musk. You know, oh. that like like Irish spring, musk. pardon the pun, but like Irish more of that. <laughs> Scotland soap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got more of that like virile, um, yeah, white musky. White musk. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it that was That makes hot. sense. That makes sense. It was nice. So he definitely like interacts with you guys like. Yeah, he hangs yeah. out and his dog Lala is Lala always is there. there. She's so cute. All right, we have a, one final question from our listeners from Debbie Chen. She says, spill some Shaw's tea. What don't we know behind the scenes? Oh. And is there a chance for a reboot now that it's on Netflix and it's kind of like picking up steam now? I think again. they should I think they should reboot it. Mm -hmm. um, we can already cast the whole like us plus the newbies because the newbies are people that 
are bone collectors. They're friends with all of us. They're frenemies with all of us. And you know who else who? would be a great part of it? Who? Our boy, um, Jackie Cox, Darius. Ah! Oh! Yes. That's right. He Wait, would be. You know Darius. Mm -hmm. I know. I love Darius. He's he would be amazing. It on stage everywhere now, too. Yes. And he would fit really well with Shaw's. If we had like the OGs plus some new, mm -hmm. I think, you know, it, it's cast in my head. Yeah. Um, and then as far as tea, like, I just feel like if I were to start talking about Shaw's tea, it would go dark. <laughs> it would. Because I just she would rather put her kid in that coffin <laughs> than talk about Shaw's tea. Okay, that too. Mm. God, because it's so, a lot. I think you want to watch what happens live last week with Jeff, right? And you get, mm -hmm. and I think something came up, and they were asking like who you talk to still, and you were right. like, eh, not really. Right, everyone's kind of grown into their own. Well, like the girls on the show that the they like tried so hard to derail me and Reza, mm -hmm. and none of the girls could accomplish that. Um, Tommy and Reza did that on their own. But like having girls see our friendship, the Will and Grace, you know, the yeah. the Lucy and Ricky or the Ethel, you know, it was, we, our bond was so strong. And to this day, people would rather see us do stuff than them trying to make Fetch happen. Like it was a takedown <laughs> yeah. every single year. Yeah. And then- Like you guys need your own spinoff show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. today, I don't know. I'd rather do these one-offs where I'm not going to be, like, vilified by some, like, bitchy girls that are trying to, like, do something that's not real. Mm -hmm. Our show was just, like, it was, like, the Jersey Shore um, or the New Jersey Housewives. It was, like, we are, like, family and friends and we are dysfunctional, but that's what our vibe was. So I don't—that's why it was on Watch What Happens Live— I kept it real. I don't have a strong relationship with any of the girls on that show for that reason. Yeah. Because of the way they were. But I was in the friendships being like totally vulnerable, telling them everything, sharing things, inviting them over, helping them get assimilated with being on the show, giving them so much. And then in return, just getting that like whole like... um Backstabby energy. Yeah, so it's like, I was like needs that. Hey guys, do you want to hear what one of my favorite sounds is? Yep, that's the sound of a correct answer when I'm learning a new language from Babbel. And if you want to learn a new language right now this year, I guarantee it's going to be one of the favorite apps of 2024. This year, I wanted to learn a new language, um, and I've learned how to say hello in French. Bonjour, y'all. You're welcome. Uh, and thanks to Babbel. Babbel is a new app. It helps you... Uh, Learn a new language, not only the correct way of how to say things, but it helps you with conversation as well. Um, it's quick and easy. The lessons are about 10 minutes long, and they are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in less than two weeks. So far, every lesson that I've taken from Babbel has just been fun. It has a very fun gamer approach to it. It's multiple choice. You hear the correct... Uh, you get the correct answer right. You hear the little bling, and you just move on to the next round. It's just so fun and easy. I wanted to know how to say just saying in French, and I learned. Je dis juste bling. Um, so, yes, I definitely think you guys all should pick up a new language in the new year. It's fun, it's easy, and it's babble. And you will be babbling on in a new language all year long. So here's the special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash just saying, judy just. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash just saying, spelled B A B B E L dot com slash just saying. Rules and restrictions may apply. Oh, I have one final question for sure. traders. Sure. What was it like sitting there listening to Kevin? talk about you the way he did because he he got a little butt hurt that he was not called alpha mm -hmm. and then he was like i don't like you i find you annoying mm -hmm. and like and you're just sitting there like laughing <laughs> i was because the room did not they st stood up for me and i was just like i did that's why i smirked because i was like i'm annoying um, like i'm not annoying because I wasn't. No, you weren't. I was so even keeled. And when I watch myself back, I'm like, was I too even keeled? And I was like, but 
you have to play the game if you want to last. You yeah. know, that's sometimes I found that I was a little mumbly. Maybe I could have been a little more spicy and assertive in my communication, but hindsight 2020, mm -hmm. um, in that room, I was trying to play the game 10 steps ahead. And in doing that, I was kind of like, sorry, you're, you're out. You well, know? and also if you've watched Bling Empire, we know that Kevin's not like alpha. He had like a mattress on the floor. He had like <laughs> shitty, like dirty sheets. Well, like I love, I so like, I love that he, so first of all, when I said to him, you, well, he was the one who like chimed in and said, I don't like the alpha male thing because you're insinuating that, that I'm, I'm insecure. Not, yeah. And I'm like, but I didn't say you're insecure, but you are very quiet and that is beta. The loud guys are the ones that take over and dominate. And, you know, I, I actually think, uh, I mean, I, I didn't hold it personal. Yeah. I think, by the way, the smaller that the, like, as the weak, I, so here's why I stop myself. Stopping myself because on my podcast with Tommy, he will say, you shouldn't say that, like, if it is, like, a spoiler to, like, who's going to last. But there's, how about we we start from here? There are still how many of us? Like, 15, 16? Seven, maybe, 15, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's a lot of people left. So I do believe that you do see more decisiveness. You do see people continue to develop and have to talk up because— it's easier to get lost in a group of 20 something. Right, right, right. right? Now everybody's watching. There, like, yeah. It, that's the dwindling, the tension. Like it's, it's now that more and more people are leaving and the, you know, no one's been oh. able to grab one yet. It's like, yes. Oh, by the way, like mm -hmm. from the first episode to the fifth, fifth, a lot of dynamics did change in that time. Because when I got frustrated about Janelle going for all the shields, there was Sandra who was like comforting me. She was like hugging me on the bird um, challenge, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I was like- I killed that challenge. I was so, yeah. I would have been great. Just <laughs> like making those bird sounds. Uh, <laughs> like that would have been great. I would have killed it. You definitely- That was a good one. You definitely could have. Uh, well, if guys make sure to watch Traders every Thursday on Peacock. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get into some current events because Let's this is it. a very- traitorous episode of Just Saying. Because over the weekend, Justin Timberlake uh, released his new song called Selfish. Mm -hmm. And he also was the guest on SNL. And Britney Spears um, charted all of the Britney army, <laughs> came after Justin. They're like, no, after what you did to her in her memoir, you're done, you're over. And uh, her song, Selfish, charted at Above. number one. And he was like number three. Yep. And I have to say, I watched the video over the weekend. It's kind of hot. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of hot. The song is hot. The song is hot. It's yeah. very Ed Sheeran and Bieber. It makes me feel nostalgic. Like, yeah. I'll, it's definitely a banger. I think so too. And I didn't want to like it, but I definitely will take this over Man in the Woods or whatever that was that we all forgot about a that couple was years terrible. ago. Yeah. That was that was not it. Yeah. But this it's it's like his nice little comeback. And um someone said that he brought sexy back. Now that's time for his comeback. So Okay, so I'll never forgive him for what he did to Jessica Beale, his wife. With the whole like Oh, with the affair? The, yeah, the, yeah. The the well, was it? Did he for sure? Right. I mean, allegedly, allegedly, don't sue. Our favorite word in LA. Anybody. Allegedly. Right. But that photo in photo of in the, the hand in yeah. the balcony. Yeah. Like he's dead to me. So that being said, I relished in the fact that she had to all, all almost like come in and save him yeah. and his song. Yeah. Because she had to say, I listened to it. I liked it. It's all okay. It's okay, y'all. You can come on in and, you know, listen to his song and then people you know, probably helped this song. Yeah. And we've all learned that Jessica Beal is the ultimate faithful. Uh, yes. <laughs> she so really true. Is. Well, well there's a... things that you do when you have kids. Yeah. There are things you you will do for the children. For sure, for sure. And um, 
now Britney Spears has come out and has apologized to Justin Timberlake and says that she's in love with his new music. She reveals she's deeply sorry for some of the things she wrote in her memoir about the whole, like, you know, pregnancy and the abortion and the bathroom and him playing the guitar. And, like, it was so yeah. much. Brit but Britney need not apologize for anything. In Here my she is. She's saying, "I love what I love his new song. Mm -hmm. I love it when Jimmy, uh, him and uh, Jimmy Fallon like joke around mm -hmm. and everything. It's so funny." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Oh, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. this could be some resolution." But also, when her book came out, uh, Justin had to like turn off all of his comments, like make them private. Sure. And once he did that, all of the comments went to, went Jessica. to Jessica Biel. Mm -hmm. That's awful. But you know what? She deserves the just not Jessica deserves. Brittany deserves. <laughs> yeah. Brittany deserves because she's been through hell mm -hmm. and everyone is speaking. But you know what I love is that there's some sort of an apology from her end. Is it really her end? I don't know. It it could be Michelle Williams. Everyone says narrating it sounds it. like her. <laughs> you know, like Michelle Williams is writing the apology just to fix pop culture. She's just like, dearest reader. She's the healer. She's Lady Whistledown. She's like, healing us all. I would love that. I mean, but I, w what a great like bridge, you know? I'm like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. We can just kind of take a moment and just be like, here we are. We're meeting in the middle. I love your song. I'm so sorry. Let's Let's squash it. Squash it. I did play it. Accountability. Yeah, I played it this morning. I think if we play it every morning when we wake up, it will c contribute to the healing yeah. process for them both. And it's just so weird that Justin Timberlake was getting trolled. Mm -hmm. He deserves it. And he's also in the movie Trolls. So he, is. <laughs> he is. Is <laughs> he the irony. in it? Uh, yeah, his voice is it. Yeah, he plays Branch or something. Scoot, Branch, oh, I don't know, shit. something. But yeah, if girls be girling, <laughs> trolls be trolling. There That's we go. the one thing it, we've that learned. That is irony. Or mm -hmm. is it double entendre? I don't know, but I was like, damn. I didn't even know the UK was in Ireland and Sc included Scotland. <laughs> we just need the more you know across. That's the, it. it that the is, UK. <laughs> that well, is an NBC message, by the way. Yeah, it is. We plot it. But now let's take a bridge and just sink everything because over the weekend there was another feud. Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion went mm -hmm. off on each other. Now this one I think is kind of ridiculous. I did have to do some research on this because I want to get it right. Because mm -hmm. if I don't, they'll come for you. All hell will break. I'll have barbs and mm -hmm. and and what hotties just oh. coming at me. <laughs> but it was the weekend of hiss versus it was. Snakes versus Sasquatches. Yes. Um, because Megan the Stallion uh, released her track, Hiss. Mm -hmm. And then in that song, she kind of came for Nicki Minaj saying um, some things about her husband with the like sexual assault accusations. She has a reference to Megan's Law, which is like to help those kind of victims. And then Nicki over the weekend had hours, hours, I want to say like 48, 72 hours but she started just tweeting on X, X formerly Twitter, mm -hmm. and was tweeting these lyrics and everyone's like, oh shit, Nikki's about to go off. So she releases this track called Bigfoot and she's talking about, you know, the size of, of Megan Thee Stallion. She's like 5'10". She is tall. She's talking about her getting shot in the foot. She even goes in to like talk about her deceased mother. Mm -hmm. And... Then the track is released, and we see that in the song were some of the tweets that she was tweeting. Or the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. So everyone's yeah. kind of like... Yeah. She, are you promoting your song? Flop? Yeah. Like you're just reading tweets now? And if you listen to the song, like Megan the Stallion's song, is it's pretty hot. I listened to it in the car yesterday. And then I listened to, to Bigfoot. Um and it's it sounds like she's just scrolling through her tweets because yeah. she's like, yeah, you yeah. want to say that? <laughs> Come on, bitch. <laughs> I see you. And she just decided to copy and paste. Yeah, yeah. But I do love the like graphic with the Bigfoot with the heel in it. Yeah, I'm here for that. I think I think it's okay if what they do is musically talented because that is what they that that is their craft. Mm -hmm. I don't like to see people fight. I don't want to see girls go toes ever. I just want them to be cool. And But the problem is that if you go back in time, people feud. Yeah. People at the top have always gone toes and feuded. 
men do as well. Um, but you know, maybe it'll give them like a duet someday. You I don't never think know. it's gonna happen. I just feel like Nicki Minaj can't have friends. She goes she's, after everybody. She's used to being like the queen bee. I get it, but like she goes after Cardi B. She goes after Megan Thee Stallion. It's just kind of like- It just... made her look, in my opinion, with the Cardi feud, it made her look weaker. Yeah. Because Cardi did really blow her out of the water with mm -hmm. like all the incredible music she put on. So, you know, it sucks. I don't, like, I'm just like a mom at this point in life, you know? Like, I just listen to them. Like, I'm like, they're both hot. You know, they're going toes. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure they're hurting a lot of people's feelings. They're also, I know that Nikki's a mom. Mm -hmm. I don't think Meg's, Meg's a mom. Well, this is where it gets dark now. Because mm -hmm. just like fans came for Jessica Biel's uh, Instagram, um, Nikki's fans, uh -huh. that's what it is. Nikki's fans are now going to Megan and being like, we know where your mother's buried mm -hmm. and we're going to go desecrate her grave. Dude. I mean, my God, not Eck and Sue. <laughs> not Eck and Sue. I mean, that's when you just turn off your ex. It's so You just much. turn it off. You like, don't look. What are you even thinking? It's just, it's so wild because I was... I was watching like Hollywood Unlocked or something on Instagram and they were talking about like 20 years ago, if there was like a rapper beef or whatever, they would just like squash in a song because there was no social media. Yeah, pour it and into now, your talent. We're just putting all of our lyrics on Twitter and then being like, that'd be a good song. That would be a good song. I think Michelle it was a Williams song. Michelle Williams narrates. <laughs> Hiss. <laughs> She'll, no, the, the song was there before mm -hmm. the tweet. So yes, pour your talent, pour your energy. Have you ever been in a really bad mood from a fight and you're like, wow, I like this side of me. It wouldn't have come out if I wasn't so mad. So a lot of good things come out of anger yeah. and betrayal. And creativeness and all that kind of stuff. But it's also uh -huh. just like, relax, everyone. Yeah, I mean, you could just say it's toxic, but they're making hits, you know? There's a lot of sides there's, to, to toxic. <laughs> there's a Speaking lot of Speaking of sides. Britney Spears and her apology well, tour. Yeah. And also... The, how cool is it? They're still making music. I'm talking about everybody, mm -hmm. JT and Nikki and Meg is still like in her prime, but it's just, thank God they're still doing it. And Meg's killing it right now, especially with like Renee Rapp on SNL. I thought she was so great. Mm -hmm. Like it's, and it's just like, just there's room for everybody. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, however, Alyssa Milano is back oh, in the news. Honey. Did you hear about this? Babe, I don't. Okay. What? Yes. Uh, Sorry. Uh, I don't want to. She's giving I can't, hands. I can't get involved. I can't say too much because I'm too close to it, but okay. I've never, I hope this doesn't go viral, honestly. <laughs> I've never liked her. Oh, no. We've had uh, her cousin on and he said the same thing. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. And by never, I mean going back as far back as it goes. Mm -hmm. She's always been such a bitch. Mm -hmm. And... Now, what she's doing is so shameful because it's like, you don't need this. I've seen her in the fields, in the baseball fields, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. So it was that. It was, I know. It was, well, she is defending, uh, setting up a GoFundMe, seeking donations for her son's baseball trip. Um, after everyone kind of went after her. Yeah. Uh, the actress wrote that she has paid for uniforms, thrown birthday parties, and sponsored any kid who can't afford monthly dues. So Alyssa Milano, um, she, was like, she was attempting to raise money for her base, her son's like, baseball team. Yeah. Um, she shared a GoFundMe on last Thursday to help raise money for her 12-year-old's team trip to Cooperstown, New York. Any amount would be so greatly appreciated. You can read more about the team and make a donation. She wrote in a post on where... X. Yeah. Um, so she went under a, a, a GoFundMe account under her married name, Alyssa Bugliari, on behalf of her husband, uh, Agent David Bugliari. It was seeking $10,000, and people were mad because she could have covered <clears throat> the trip herself. Rich people may not ask for money. Thank you. That's it. Well, it is crazy because I have a clip with her cousin, Nikki Paris, and that clip is still going viral on TikTok because he's just kind of like, I asked her to volunteer for like his brother's special needs. And he was like, mm. um, he was like wanting to her, wanting for her to be like an ambassador. And she said, no, and this is family. And then somebody asked her to be an ambassador and she said yes to that one. Mm -hmm. So there's still a family feud with that. Yeah. But also it gives me Troop Beverly Hills vibes, which <laughs> right now I'm in my Troop Beverly Hills era. Yeah. 
because <laughs> Megan King was on Jeff Lewis Live and she she was selling Girl Scout cookies for her daughter Aspen. And so Aspen. it reminded me of this of the scene where they were like, if you just want us to buy two thousand dollars worth of cookies, can't we just buy them ourselves? And she's like, No, I want to teach the girls integrity and how to do it for themselves. Let's do it the old fashioned way. Start a GoFundMe. <laughs> like, exactly. That was really cringy. We were sitting at home reading that and I just thought like when do you have somebody intervene in your life that will just tell you, no, Alyssa, you cannot do that. You yeah. may not do that. But I mean, the whole thing, she could have financed it. It was like seven, 7,000 or something. $10,000 to yeah. go to like Come on. Cooperstown, New York? Yeah. I just, I don't think that you can, you just, you can't have it all, right? Yeah. You can't have it all. But also like, get your kids... <laughs> To do it the old-fashioned way, to go door-to-door -door with yes. the little pamphlet yes. and be like, I'm trying to get my team to go to New York so we can play. And then, you know, you go yeah, to, like— Yeah, it's a gated—you know, it's yeah. a gated part of L.A. Yeah. You, you go just, to, you know, whoever's house, go to Kyle Richards' house. Exactly. Go to, you know, go to Sutton. Yeah, go to know? go to LVP's neighborhood. Yeah, and and ring the doorbell, you know. Like Hakeem Olajuwon will answer the door. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Okay. I I believe it's already February. February. And we literally oh ended January with all the feuds. <laughs> we could start Christmas shopping. We can. Yeah. What are you going to be for Halloween next year? <laughs> right? I know. What well, are we going to be? Here's, I don't know yet. I'll probably be um, the two gays who got kicked off the plane. You know, the, they're oh, like, yeah, think the, of the girl, Shelby and Dolly. That's it. That's the one running. That'll uh, be cute for you and Evan. At, yeah. Just yeah. striped shirts and anger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one, uh, um, Gwyneth Paltrow has come up with the wildest spies from Goop's Valentine's Day 2024 gift guide. So if you're in the mood or you're just like, I don't know what to get my partner for Valentine's Day, don't worry. Gwyneth Paltrow has you covered, question mark? Wait, but it's a vibrator, like a cock ring. Well. Wait, what is she saying? Well, right here it is the. A vibrating cock ring. Well. It's an extravagant present, like a wrinkle-zapping Lima laser starter kit. She is fucking with everyone, because I saw that. <laughs> no one is going to put that on their body. Did you see that? It's... Yeah. But look, no. she, has, she has a Morse code-inspired Jenna Blake bracelet and a 14-karat gold Kiki de Montparnasse handcuffs. Mm. Um, we have to have a good vibrator or 12. The Valentine's Day Roundup features the brand's double-sided wand. Now, this is good PR. Mm -hmm. See, because no one needs to buy that. Mm -hmm. But her publicist is like, this is how you make the number four item in the news. Mm -hmm. You just throw like $14,000 for a cock ring, say that it's gold, and everyone's going to want it. Nobody is going to want this. That's it. The one on the top that looks like a lipstick. That's a cock ring? Why would you want... Do you want that running the whole length of your dick? By the way... I will just say this. Be careful how you ejaculate because you will yeah. then rely on that to come the next time. Mm. If you take like vibrators away, it's harder to like have. Because it's just not the same experience. It's just, yeah, it's kind of like. Yeah. I it's messy. It's never like trust a wand. I learned that at Harry Potter World. You can't. <laughs> You can't trust a you wand. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. I love that she's calling them wands. They're not dildos. It's a just a mm, it's a love wand. It's a wand. Just a wand. And these are expensive wands. Like one of the the laser starter kits twenty six hundred dollars. The the bracelet and handcuffs are two hundred fifty and fourteen thousand eight hundred. Um, what about a scepter? Oh, it's a, oh, it wasn't a cock ring. It's a well. Let's see. It's a Crave Tees vibrator ring. A petite bullet-shaped toy that doubles as jewelry and will bring a little buzz and warmth wherever your hand wanders. I so know what this ring. is. This is for the sex workers at the steakhouses where they just like sit at the bar and they just go like this, like, hey, this is how we solicit to like take me. Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> right? It's just a ring, but then if like I go under sizzler, the like at a sizzler, like at the at the steakhouse. Well, I was thinking Mastros. Oh, okay. Or, no, know. I'm thinking of like just a, a an off duty goop woman who's just sitting at the bar with like some <laughs> with her 195 dollar Oklahoma sex City toy oil six dollar buffet. Mm -hmm. Where I hope she can make her money back. <laughs> 
I was thinking just peninsula. a love taze. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> just a little. Um, speaking okay. of Sizzler, mm. Kathy Hilton and her husband have revealed that they go to the Cheesecake Factory once a week for date night. Of course. As they should. Of course. She uh, said, where else am I going to get a mo- meatloaf like this? Well, I read it. Oh, I thought you were talking about her husband. Sorry. <laughs> 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 so she said to page six that they go there once a week. Um, she loves the meatloaf. She loves the chicken Alfredo. And also the one that you dip with the sauce. Oh, the egg rolls. Maybe the probably, avocado egg probably rolls. Probably the avocado egg rolls. Uh, oh, she boy. hasn't ordered uh, the restaurant's signature dessert dish. She does appreciate the large variety of desserts. So you one, know what? One more thing. Yeah. I bet you a million dollars that she takes the carry out of the leftovers. 1,000%. Done. It's a good carry out. Yeah. You I get mean, a full bag. Yeah. And if it's too big of a portion and if you're smart, you will order enough that you have to take home. I right? ordered, I went there, I went to the Grove and the Cheesecake Grove, the Cheesecake Grove okay. and went upstairs and sat at the bar mm. and I ordered the small salad. It was still gigantic. Yeah. It's the same bowl. It's yeah. the same plate. I was like, I can't eat this. But also, you know, I love that Kathy Hilton has given the okay for Cheesecake Factory. So you guys get your dates ready. Valentine's Day is around the corner. However, I used to work at the Cheesecake Factory in Beverly Hills. Oh, you did? I was going to say, they for sure go to the Beverly Drive one. Absolutely. 100%. And that's the one that I worked at when I first moved here. And um, it, it I was quit. the best one. I you quit. quit? Yeah. Well, I didn't have the best job, I was the whipped cream boy. So were you on the bar on the side? Mm-hmm. Okay, that was easy. What are you complaining about? Well, you had to like write happy birthday and chocolate sauce and that wasn't my vibe. Oh, you that sounds like a carpal tunnel. Yeah, right? <laughs> like it would be like, I have like the giant plate of... and I'm like, <laughs> I have to dream big. I got to get out of this one cake town. So what did you get out of it? Um, I, 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 I met um I met my dad, my biological father. That's there? why I quit. Not there. No, that'd be weird. That's a whole nother oh, series. <laughs> but I connected with him online and I was like putting the whipped cream on the cheesecake and all the bitchy gays who didn't like me. They're like, I can't take this to table five. Can you redo it? And I was Stop like, it. And then I do really? it again. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna go meet my dad for the first time ever. Can I get these days off? And they were like, put in a request. And I put in the request. They still said no. And I was like, well, I got to go. And they're like, if you leave here, you will never work at a cheesecake factory ever again. That's and it. I said, bye. Bye. <laughs> so See never, ya. I never went back, but that was my legacy I left behind. That's good. Yeah. And then what was your next job? Um... I don't know, actually. You were like, I made it big right after no, that. No, yeah. I do a podcast in a basement. Are you kidding me? It's perfect. Live big, kids. That's it. But here are the list of bad first date spots ranked by women. And this has actually gone viral. Um, well, I'm glad, you know, it's sorry to interrupt no. you. But Justice for Cheesecake Factory brought to you by Kathy Hilton. Thank you. Yes, because that other lady that said she didn't want to be taken to a date mm. on a cheesecake, I get it. Like, I wouldn't want someone to pick me up if I'm, like, dressed up. Like, it depends. Where are we going to Cheesecake Factory and jogger set? Yeah. Fine, right? I think so. And I feel like it's it's it's, it's definitely a mood. It's, you know, it's relationship year one vibes. It's I've, not first date vibes. Yes, I definitely feel like I have to have mental counseling when the menu arrives because it's like 800 pages. It is. And I'm just like, oh God. Ugh. It's just going to be the three things you always get. I know, but it is good. That that spicy Cajun chicken Alfredo. Oh yeah. That's always bomb. Oh, I'm going there right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have left my body as we speak. Totally. So here are the, this is the full list Oh my God. Of places. The first one being Cheesecake Factory. No, disagree. Disagree. Totally. Second, Applebee's, which sounds, they're giving out $200 gift cards. Sounds sweet. Applebee's, good for like Valentine's Day, dessert. You know, you could feed each other. Yeah. Right? Chili's, number three. Okay. Chili's is like sports bar vibe. Chili's is bomb. They have the, like the best salsa. Yeah. Like you could sit at the bar, mm-hmm. get tipsy. It's mm-hmm. like really good happy hour prices. Like they have blue drinks with like Baja in them, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Chipotle number four. I agree I that, that you should not no. go to Chipotle. No. The self service is not the vibe for yeah, Valentine's no. Day. No, 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 no. Uh, mm-hmm. Olive Garden um, is number five. Okay. 
So people <laughs> are saying no. They're saying people no. People are saying no about Olive Garden. You know why? Because when you're here, you're family, and no one wants to think of that with their partner. That's yet. right. If you're on a date, you want to think of that person as a family person. It's incestuous. And also, if they have that ring vibrator on, is it a breadstick? It, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. What? It was dark. Yeah, why are you eating horny. my ring vibrator? Oh, I thought it was a breadstick. I, I chipped thought, a tooth. I yeah. thought it was Valentine's Day. Come on. <laughs> what are we doing? Number six, the movies. Yes, I think movies should be higher up on this because mm -hmm. you're meeting somebody, you know what's a great idea? Let's sit in the dark and not talk. For people with no personality. Yeah. That's why. I get that. I, but it's like if you have no personality and you're horny, mm -hmm. go into a dark room and sit and then little by little you could bust out the cock ring and put it on their lap. Sit in the back row. The get a matinee. Date. <laughs> oh, oh it's the first date. I forgot. I'm just saying. Is it I first, first date or Valentine's I'm romantic. Day? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, get in the dark and bust it out. <laughs> I thought she said you were horny. I know. God, let's go sit in the movie theater. Number seven, 1,000 percent, your house. I like that the most. You like just hanging, hanging out, getting yes. an Uber Eats. Yes. Just chill. No, 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 no. How about this? How about this? You stay home but you can make a pizza from scratch, you know? Like, you could learn, yeah. you know, to do something fun in the kitchen, clear off your island, and, like, just... I like that. Go to town. It's kind make of a lazy fun. choice. Like, do, like, your own massage night or something. Oh, yeah. Make sushi. Yeah. Be, put it on you, you know. Oh. You could. You, could. <laughs> you know. Um, number eight, any fast food chain. Agree. Which includes all of these... Well, that's not fast food. Chipotle is the only fast food one. Right. But number nine is Buffalo Wild Wings, which is very specific. It's a followed vibe. by 10, Wingstop. Those are two different things. Buffalo Wild Wings, I hope you're familiar, is a whole sports bar, bar. Yeah. Like you can go there to party. <sighs> yeah. Like I always got margaritas and what, and like you, that's a night out. That's a wild night. That's a blackout night out. Buffalo Wild Wings is yes. blackout because then there's like karaoke after the game or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the wing stop is more of a takeaway place. Mm -hmm. That's like an Uber Eats delivery. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they have tables there. <laughs> I think it's just like takeaway only. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh is my God, it? I'm there's right. There's no tables at wing stop? I mean, See? They, there's like a couple. It's kind of like Chipotle. See? It's like there's a couple tables, but it's mostly people walk away with it. Oh, yeah. People Thanks. should walk away with wings. And Buffalo Wild Wings is like a place where you can turn yeah. up. Yeah. Like last night, the Super Bowl were, was determined. Buffalo oh, yeah. Wild Wings would have been a great spot to celebrate. Which is the, we have... Um, Niner, Niners. Niners, 49ers, and the Chiefs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very like oh, 1800s. Taylor and Travis Kelsey. Oh, I know. Had a great night last Which night. Which she was like going through it last night too, because people, people were, were like... People were booing her. People were booing her. People were like, you're ruining Booing football. football. Yes. She's like, you're That's right. so rude. That's so rude. No. So this is the Smasher Pass game okay. of the top dishes at Cheesecake Factory. Okay. So Kathy Hilton has approved this game. Okay. Um, original Cheesecake, Smasher Pass. Pass. Wow. Just the plain one? You don't like it? I just, no. No. I need more. Chicken Madeira. That's the grilled chicken breast topped with asparagus, mozzarella cheese, and Smash. mushroom. Smash. It's amazing. Really? My mom's favorite. Oh, really? Yes. All right. MJ's mom approved. She loves it. Number three, bang bang chicken and shrimp. Love it. Chicken. So good. Crispy chicken and shrimp tossed in a spicy sauce. I forgot with... about bang bang chicken and shrimp. I'm going to order that when we get there in 30 minutes. You know what else is weird? That is the new single from Nicki Minaj it is. Um, <laughs> called Bang Bang Chicken and Shrimp, <laughs> where she doesn't play with these hoes anymore. <laughs> Bang, bang, chicken, and shrimp mm -hmm. foot. Number four, avocado egg rolls. Smash. Numero uno. Smash. You got to get the uh, the clear chili sauce with that, as well as the one that comes with it. I hope Kathy Hilton's really listening to this episode. Mm -hmm. Cajun jambalaya pasta. So oh, good. I will do things in that. You will gain weight as you're eating it, and it's worth it. Like, that is a night out for me. Like, if there was a big oh. bowl, if that was a trader's challenge... <laughs> I so first want to jump in there. The food was good there, by the way. Mm. It was good. At Trader's? Traders? Yeah. Like the breakfast was good? All the meals were really good. Were they like... Gourmet catered for real. Work. No joke. Work. God. Lemon herb roasted chicken. Let's go, Smash. yes. Smash. Healthy. Mm -hmm. Fresh strawberry cheesecake. Yeah, sure. Okay. I like strawberry glaze. I would need extra glaze. I like a glazy cheesecake, mm -hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> Let's see. We have crispy crab wontons. There would be other things I would get before I would get the wontons. 
Oh. You know, it's it, it's number eight because it's, you know, there's things above it. Yeah, it's it's very uh, beta. Yeah. Um, <laughs> number nine. Not like Dan beta. Like ch- chicken Parmesan sandwich, number nine. Oh, no, I don't Pass. want all that bread and breaded chicken. And Well, then, I mean, the bread at Cheesecake Factory on its own. The sourdough? Everything. No, that like brown bread. Brown, oh, you're a brown bread. See, we'd be fine. We can go and share a basket. I would take all the sourdough and you would take the brown oat one. It's always the best. The and butter. Number, 10, number 10, fried mac and cheese. Never heard of it. I've what? never heard of fried mac cheese either. Huh. I wonder if it comes in a Oh, it has a, a panko crust. So it's like, yeah, it's... Griddle? It's, yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, is that it? That was well, that fun. Is it. That is the podcast this week. Woo! MJ, please tell everyone where they can find you, follow you. Any last minute things you want to list, uh, tell all the Traders fans out there? Um, it is your time to shine. <laughs> Well, um, you can find me at Mercedes Javid Mm -hmm. and I hope the traders never ends. Like I hope this season lasts forever. Yeah. Yeah. How many episodes is it? Can you say that? I don't know, but I think it's 12. Yeah. So yeah, they're all like five. I cannot wait for the reunion. There's a reunion. There's a reunion with Andy Cohen. I'm so excited. Why isn't Alan doing it? I don't know. I think. His That's visa a really was it was terminated. declined. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. So have y'all taped the reunion yet? No. Ooh, when is that? You know, we don't get the episodes in advance, so I have no idea what happens unless I recall it. You know what I mean? You need to go binge your own show that you're on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I am. I'm going you need to. to. It's so good. You don't get to um you don't get to decide what's on TV at your house when there's kids in sports. Sure, totally. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been a busy month for everybody. Oh, it's not going to stop. Yeah. That was the lesson. It was just sports, kids. But you're like, mommy has a show. <laughs> mommy Mommy's has... on TV. She has things to yeah. do. Uh, well, I'm so glad you were here. And make sure to catch MJ as well on um, Jeff Lewis Live on uh, Sirius XM. Yes. And if you need more of me, yeah. the Till the Dirt pod. Till the Dirt? Yes. Which is the dirt that's still on Eck and Sue oh my in God. that grave. Just <laughs> not, not Eck and, and Sue. Sue. We'll catch you guys next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Bye.